scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. That the Bible says to be Christ-like in every way. And when it says to be Christ-like, it's not just in the demonstration of power and of miracles, of signs and wonders alone. We must be Christ-like even in expressing the character of Christ. And that includes being apt to show mercy. Hallelujah. Jesus taught when he walked upon the earth. Jesus taught and he mentored the disciples using parables. And there was a reason why he did that. A parable is an earthly thought, an earthly um, revelation that is captured I mean a heavenly revelation that is captured in earthly expression so he would use agriculture he would use uh, thoughts that were they were accustomed to as far as their civilization was concerned in one of these parables we'll only consider one for this service Luke chapter 10 is called the parable of the Good Samaritan we we'll begin our reading from verse 25 Jesus now is teaching us the character of mercy Luke 10 25 are we still here and behold he said a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying master what shall I do to inherit eternal life and he said unto him what is written in your law how readest thou 27 and he answering said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart your soul and your strength and your mind and then you shall love your neighbor the same way that you love yourself. 28. Jesus begins to teach now. He said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. 29. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, Who is that neighbor that is deserving of my love, that is deserving of the communication of mercy from me? Then Jesus begins his parable. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, follow closely now, and fell among thieves, the Bible says, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Remember our teaching on mercy, that mercy has two expressions. On one hand, it has to do with granting pardon to a defaulter, an offender or a sinner but the other expression is communicating the action that is derived when you have pity upon one who is unable to help himself are we together strengthening men from their inadequacies now here we see a man the bible says that man was beaten by robbers and was left half dead verse 31 and by chance there came down to him a certain priest. This was a man of God. He came to a certain, he came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Look at that. Hold on. Let's not rush. 31. Let's discuss this issue. 
the bible would have just said two men passed him but the bible describes the kind of men because there is an information we must derive number one he says a certain priest a priest is a committed ordained and zealous man of god this man was on his way to church to serve god and to prove to god that he loved him so much and the bible says he saw one he was on his way to go and obtain mercy from god and now seeing one who was half dead the bible says he did not even pay attention to such a man remember i told you that mercy is a harvest here was an opportunity for the priest to be christ-like and to sow that seed of mercy over this innocent man who you know the bible says withhold not good from them with whom it is due when it is within your power this is a priest so the priest was not naive as to the expectations of God based on scripture he was not an amateur spiritually based on their standard of knowledge and yet he saw a man who was incapacitated and left him for dead to rush to church how many Christians act today like that priest we are zealous to do a lot of spiritual things and then we leave some of the the weightier matters in the eyes of God there are many people who are needing and deserving of mercy and it is within our power to reach unto them but we we'll prefer to fulfill the rituals of religion than to be sincere and reach down to those who are deserving of that mercy the Bible says the priest was hurrying up to church and he left an opportunity now the problem is who was the witness there because jesus is giving a parable the priest would think no one was watching that parable also reveals that there is the all-seeing eye of god watching over the works of men you would think because there were no physical witness nobody would call that man to order and here jesus is giving in that parable a very silent information that you must speak that i am watching even when there is no one there are we together so the priest passed by to the other side an expression of disdain no 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 i have nothing to do with you you are unclean you are almost dying i'm not ready to take that responsibility upon myself verse 32 likewise the levite here you are again these are all spiritual people in in various sense and he was at the place and came and looked on him and passed by now 33 then a certain samaritan as he journeyed he came where he was and when he saw him here is our word again compassion i told you that the foundation for mercy is compassion what is compassion pity what is compassion the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity had compassion on him what was the response every response in honor to your compassion is called mercy now you see mercy in action 34 he had compassion on him the bible says and he went to him and he bound up his wounds pouring oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him next verse please and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pens and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more what a compassionate samaritan when i come again i will repay you who is teaching here jesus jesus is showing us something very powerful 36 which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor to him that fell among the thieves here's our chance to answer don't assume you know the answer you might be wrong which of these three the man of god the priest the levite or the supposedly um, inferior and dejected samaritan one was a powerful man of god probably having a ministry 
both of them were successful people and here is a Samaritan who is demonstrating Christ-like character in a way that it was more than enough for him to have at least bound him and left him but the Bible says he took him to the inn kept him there gave two pence and said I will return back does that sound like Jesus who will leave 99 to look for the one and when he's found that one he will rejoice 37 verse 37 and he said he that showeth mercy on him so what did Jesus call that entire action mercy from the time he had compassion until he left plus his thinking everything together Jesus calls it so the next time you are looking for an expression of mercy go to that story from the moment the man had compassion everything he did in honor to that compassion Jesus calls it in one word mercy Jesus now leaves us with a command he says go and do likewise go and do likewise that means at every point in your life remember you can be three of these people to anyone in need of mercy you can act like the priest who ignores that person in a bid to honor your spirituality you can act like the levite who would ignore him or you can act like the samaritan who may look foolish for the moment but in the mind of god is communicating mercy every one of us will have a chance to be one of these three people in our lifetime sadly respectfully so many of us for a long time have been like the priest obsessed about spirituality the first to pray the first to lie down the first to roll the first to say lord i love you the first to say lord you can count on me but here is an opportunity to demonstrate the love of jesus and we frown Many of us are like the Levites. We're on our way going to do the things that we have to do that make for life, godliness, spirituality, and we ignore the weightier matters. You see, in the mind of God, most of the things we do not pay attention to are the things that really touch the heart of God. The charismatism around Christianity and religion, that can easily receive an applause from men because it seems to be obvious. Power, healings, miracles, all of these things. But there are things that nobody may be there to clap for you for. But in the mind of God, those things are priceless before him. Can I tell you, everyone seated here, there is an opportunity for you today in our world to show someone mercy. It can be your house help. It can be your aid. It can be somebody in need of compassion. It can be a child whose school fees is less than 10, 20,000 and you can pay. Even if it's one time. Many times we give. Many times we communicate expressions of love. Provided there is a structure to notice us and shout our praise. Respectfully speaking, that's what you see our wonderful politicians and the rest do. No one is really greedy. People just want it in exchange for praise that must be loud. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Can I tell you sincerely? There are many people today who are suffering in this nation and suffering across the globe because during the active periods of their lives they had the opportunity to sow the seed of mercy to undeserving people by now they would have been rich recipients of that harvest some of them while they were in the civil service some of them while they were in government some of them while they were in power some of them as preachers they had moments every day god gave them an opportunity to sow the seeds of mercy they were the only people in their entire world right now respectfully speaking some of those people alongside their children are suffering from the starvation of mercy why because they fail to extend mercy 
there are people today whose children should easily get jobs based on the kinds of influence they had while they were working but they didn't raise anybody they didn't lift anybody people cried in front of their offices and they insult, insulted them jamming the door in front of them and according to the law of times and seasons the tides have changed can i tell you don't tell me i'm not educated don't tell me apostle i don't have the privilege of coming from a great family you do not know that the samaritan you so messy for today might be the one to help you carry your cross there are people today who did not have the privilege of say education the privilege of connections but my goodness they are wealthy recipients of the harvest of mercy that they sowed they sowed into the lives of several people when i learned this principle i made up my mind that as much as god grants me grace i will be as merciful the same way god has shown me mercy apt to provide pardon to defaulters apt to bring forgiveness to sinners and then as much as it is within my power that i will help as many who are inadequate and it is my within my power to help them if i cannot help you with money i can help you with quality spiritual information that can guide your decisions if I cannot help you, if I cannot reach you with that information, I can help you through the ministry of prophetic intercession. In any case, I can sow that seed of mercy. I remind you this morning, dear people of God, more than just receiving from a merciful God, we must become merciful men to men. It does not just stop at receiving from God. Give us this day, he said, our daily bread. And he says, forgive us our trespasses, even as we forgive those who trespass against us. I told you that the communication of mercy stems from the fact that there is something about the nature of man. Please look up. It is easy to forgive and let go when you understand the, the intrinsic construct of the falling man. That all of us at best are still flawed. It is only a matter of time. In teaching on the subject of mercy, <laughs> I always teach that you will be deserving of mercy at one point or the other. The condition is not to be a sinner. The condition is to be human. Provided you are human, I give you the gift of time and may it help you reveal how human you are. Because no matter how self-righteous, no matter how flawless and blameless you seek to walk, provided you enjoy this gift of time, I guarantee you, one day you will be in need of mercy therefore be careful when you point hands at people time is waiting to reveal something about you be careful when you bring down people with joy be careful when you rejoice over the pain of people i'm not saying to permit and allow licentiousness but can i tell you there must be a component of mercy there are some of us who say that's how i am i am hard once i stamp my feet that's the end of it i beseech you by reason of the fact that you are human change change god forbid i can't help this person accept it as a statement that you made in ignorance and repent this morning because i assure you even if you are jesus a day will come you will not have the power to carry the cross on your own your jesus the all-powerful the one who raised the dead could not carry wood raise the dead but now jesus was bleeding and he needed help someone in that crowd remembered him feeding the five thousand someone in that crowd remembered him sitting at the well because of one woman and he said everyone may be ashamed of you but let me come to help you can i tell you there are many of you the seeds of mercy you are sowing now will be equal to a destiny of beauty and color for your children experience has taught us that people will forget what you said but they will never forget how you made them feel can I tell you, we live in a world today that seems to downplay anybody that does not have any constructive value to match your level. We must be careful. 
we must be careful when you see a successful man you've seen all he can become but when you see someone who is yet becoming you don't know how far he can become the child today may be your destiny helper tomorrow the nobody today may be the one God will use to lift you is someone learning now so let us not just pray and ask the merciful God to visit us and say oh thou God of mercy come and visit me and then he is asking you a question I am more than willing because my mercies are new every morning but are you willing to communicate the same mercy I wish I had the time I would have taught, told you another and taught you another parable the parable of a man who was owing he was owing little and he went to the king and the king made a statement and told him he said okay no problem because he cried he said I'll let you go and he ran and met someone who was owing him far less and forced the man and said you must pay me forgive us our trespasses as we forgive do you know what that means always remember that you are human it's not a call to weakness it's a, it's a call to remember that the best of us will still be limited hallelujah one time I was praying for a man and his dear wife they had a very serious misunderstanding and we we're just trying to manage the situation and the man turned and told his wife I'm sorry and he said I will never offend you again I said stop there oh God you are lying I know this is an emotional moment I know you are being sincere but you are just being human let's not make a fool of ourselves here it will happen again let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness means to pardon a default forbearance means to create a permanent system of accommodation over that weakness because it will happen again and again and again there are many people in your life you don't need to forgive you need to forbear this is a revelation no? and this is a deliverance service for someone you have been trying to forgive people you need to forbear that's why the pain will not let you rest if you know I'm a talkative and I will remain so all my life advising me to be quiet is a waste of time for beer are we together you see let me tell you this there is no disappointment until there is an expectation once you do not expect you can't be disappointed Believers are encouraged, like God, to be people that show mercy and compassion. Believers are encouraged, based on scripture, that like God, we are to be people who are able to show mercy and show compassion. This is true. This is a church with so many leaders and so many successful people, and I can tell you, the moment you become a leader at any level, it will take the grace of God and this revelation to show mercy because people will annoy you every day. Your life and your organization will be full of people with different shades of wisdom. And you will need to, to trust God for grace. Sometimes the way to show mercy is just to be quiet. Because if you open your mouth and speak, you may wreck and destroy someone's life forever. Hallelujah. Mercy is very powerful. I keep sowing seeds of mercy because I know that I'm human. Someone said, Apostle, I love you so much. I said, you are right. That's because there are many things you don't know. You've not seen me hungry. You've not seen me shouting at anybody. You like the version you see. Hmm. If the only thing you have towards me is love, I don't trust you. Let me see the mercy comport. Do you still have mercy in place? It will guarantee the longevity of our relationship. If the only thing you have towards me is love, I don't trust you. Hmm. Some of you, is when you listen to this message again, you will hear something that you didn't hear now. Peter looked at Jesus and he made all kinds of statements. I won't do this and that and Jesus looked at him before a small girl Peter ran away called a small girl woman that I don't know him and he ran away 
when Jesus, Peter was angry and offended that Jesus had made them, made them to leave fishing under a proposition that they will be great people. Now he, he had died and left them with nothing. Remember, Peter had a family. He was angry and in John 21, he said, I go a fishing. Let me not do two zero. Let me go back to what I was doing and leave this karma who deceived me for three and a half years. And the disciples said, we go with you. The Bible says, as they were fishing, they caught nothing. And then a stranger stands by the seashore and says, little children, have you any catch? Little children, who is speaking? And then he says, cast your nets to the right side. And Peter casted his net to the right side and he caught so much fish. And then he realized that it was Jesus. The Bible says he washed his clothes and came and said, depart from me, I'm a sinner. Brokenness. You have done something for me. I don't deserve this catch. Not after all the things I did and said to you. But now you came and acted as if you cannot even remember any of those. And he sat with Jesus. And while they were eating, he asked him a question. He said, Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? God is asking you the same question. Lord, I love you. He's saying, how much? I love you enough to keep all the principles you have taught in scripture. Then he tells you, go and do likewise. Be a sower of the seeds of mercy. That there are some of you after this service, you need to get up and in fact i'm not i'm not teaching you to be careless but there are some of you sincerely there are people for instance who owe you and there is no there is no way under heaven based on their level of thinking that they will be able to pay you and the truth is that that money you really do not need it based on the way god has increased you i'm challenging someone could it be possible to call that family and advise them and talk to them don't just forgive them if you forgive people and don't sow the seed of knowledge you wasted the opportunity and you call them and say look I gave you a chance this is only 50,000 it's not about the money I was watching your communication of responsibility I know you cannot pay I will forgive you but to replace your ignorance let me help you understand that next time this is how to approach life go and then heaven records it and adds it to the credit of your children and one day you'll find out that your child is just soaring on the wings of favor and God will remind you that 10 years ago this was the seed you sowed. Can I tell you, I do not mean to be a bearer of bad news people of God but there are many of you. If the harvest that comes from the seed you are sowing now actually comes, get ready for a painful life. Because many of us have invested our adult life sowing seeds of pain please don't be offended we came to teach on mercy joining the heads of people together and standing with joy while you watch all of them argue it out is a seed this service this morning we are going to find time to pray and say lord show me mercy even if it's for the sake of my children i have sown seeds in ignorance some of you you are not at that place of work again some of you you are not even in that nation again but you left a track record of pain that nobody from your family will be able to open that door again there are names in this nation that are padlocks there are names in this nation that are keys there are people who have had to change their names even their surnames as a safety net because if they dare hear who is this that surname remind me again you can't get the job but i'm qualified leave this place and they will recall an event can i tell you we live in a world where it's fashionable to be judgmental now as leaders we owe a responsibility to rebuke to correct to guide people in righteousness but can i tell you the truth it is mercy and truth for he says do not let mercy and truth truth alone without mercy is dangerous it's like driving a car with only an accelerator and no brake no matter how careful you are you will need both the accelerator and the brake to drive effectively some of us have only accelerators we don't have brakes we must be careful we live in a world today where it is easy to point fingers at people you hear that somebody's business went down or you hear that a family maybe a woman's child stole or did something wrong and we are very quick to point fingers can i tell you 
I don't endorse evil. I don't endorse licentiousness. But believers, God is challenging us. Let us be the first to come and wrap our arms around wounded people and show them love for God's sake. The world is already a place of pain, a place of misery. Let us not add to it. Okay, so the man was involved in a fraudulent issue in his office and the newspaper is carrying everything around. Now, you've seen that the man is broken and he's regretting what he has done. We're not endorsing the sin, but somebody must come and say, look, it's all right. We do not endorse this, but we are going to stand and cry with you. And like Peter, they say, depart from me, I am a sinner. And you say, remember, we are all sinners who are saved by grace. For the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, the Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I've had the honor and the privilege of crying with so many people by reason of what I do. Some of them politicians, some of them business people, some even men of God. Sincerely, I will tell you, some of them have come with charms and come with things to say, Apostle, I can't continue like this again. I was wrongly mentored. It's not that I wanted this. I was praying for the prophetic or praying for crowd and somebody took me to somebody to took me some and this and that and while they are saying that sometimes i find tears just trying to come out of my eyes because it would have been me the difference between me and that man is not discipline is mercy it would have been me can i tell you listen there are many of us that if you were exposed to the conditions of the people you are criticizing, you will do 10 times worse the things they are doing. Hallelujah. Now, please do not forget that we are not justifying evil here, but we are teaching ourselves that all men are human and we must put in, as we, as we drive through this pathway called life, you must reserve a space in your heart to show mercy. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. You find out that someone just lost their loved ones. Don't go there and start shouting and saying, where's your understanding of divine life? Blah, blah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You see, as a man of God, it's a difficult thing, especially when you walk in signs and wonders and miracles to stand and cry with people when they are bereaved. Most times when people die, I'm usually one of the first that they reach because they are still hoping I can pray for the people to come back to life. And sometimes it is difficult. On one side, they watch your crusade and they see people rising up from wheelchairs, throwing crutches, and now they are saying, please help me. This is my only son. He just died. Some will even quote scriptures and say, I apostle, I know. One word from God. At that point, I don't need to be a preacher again. I need to be a human with great compassion. To say listen even though this person may not be able to come back to life we are here standing with you to cry it is powerful to be there with people when they are crying when you come to people when they are celebrating alone you came too late the journey starts from when the tears start not when celebration starts don't just meet the resurrected jesus and claim a stake in his life were you there on his way to golgotha there are many of you, you will not be invited at the table of greatness of many because you are ignoring them now while they are crying. And when they are left alone, the God of all mercy will come and pick them. And when you think they are dead, you will still see them standing. And you say, oh, I remember you. They say, no, I don't remember you. I remember the one who was there for me while I'm crying. There are people today who were relieved from jobs. And some of you are aware that there are parents with three, four children relieved from jobs. I'm not putting you under pressure. Never for once did you even send 5,000 to say, sir, I may never be able to help you, but just to let you know that you are in my mind and you are my thoughts and my prayer. This may not do much, but even if it is to buy a recharge card, that 5,000 you have sent will be equal to 5 million tomorrow. It's an investment that does not fail. Be part of people's success story not just their celebration of it hallelujah praise the name of the lord i think it was two or three years ago in a ministry in zaria no no i think it was two years ago 
had left Zaria not too long after I left Zaria they called me one morning and said you know I don't know who threw her child just at our third overflow a baby just threw the baby and left the baby there and when I got to here I said ah really why would they do that who is that I mean even if she does not want the child for whatever reason you take them to a, a social welfare or this why throw the baby and I called a woman, the woman who found the baby, I looked at her, I said, Madam, would you do me a favor of taking care of this baby? Just be the mother, I will fund the project. I was in Zaria a few weeks ago, and I was looking at that beautiful girl growing. And I'm saying, Lord, thank you for the honor and the privilege. Immortalize your impact in others, so that even if you are not there, you are still alive in them. He says, Abel, though dead, yet speak it. Church is quiet. I believe the Holy Spirit is drumming it into our spirit. Africans pray. We are the first to shout and roll and say mercy. And God is saying, the mercy you are asking for, are you willing to give it to others? Many times, respectfully speaking, we act like children. You know how children act? They stretch their hands. When you give them something, you say, give it back, and they refuse. They forget that they were given. A man can receive nothing except it is given. Some of you have never been part of cleaning someone's tears. Christmas, you don't bless anybody except your friends. And that is simply because you are looking to maintain business opportunities. That's investment, not mercy. Remember, mercy is to an undeserving person. Please don't be offended. God is just drumming this into our spirits because we need to get it. It is within your power to do something today. It is within your power to do something today. By the privilege of God's grace, some of us are multi-millionaires. We have been helped by God. There's no need to hide it. But can I tell you, it is not what you have. It is who was lifted because of what you have. It is who was lifted because of what you are there. Let me tell you this, respectfully speaking. I come from the north and I will tell you this. It is in this one area, my apologies for my bias, that you see Muslims and northerners, they have mastered the art of showing mercy. They, oh, I can tell you, anybody who is honest in this morning service will nod his head in agreement with me. Hmm. Hallelujah. We need to be merciful and we need to be compassionate for our sakes and for the sake of our children and even our children's children. This morning service, we are going to pray and there are, there are two prayers when it's time to pray we're going to pray two sets number one is to kill some wrong seeds we have sown now because if the seeds of lack of compassion that we have sown actually become harvests we will spend the remaining that means you have you have already enjoyed the happiest days of your life and we need to cancel it by the blood to say lord i made a mistake i have everybody around my life is fighting me because of my 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 show of hardness and i think it is proof of masculinity lord you have reminded me this morning that i'm human one day i will need that mercy let me tell you this respectfully speaking parents there are many of us the way we are treating our children now don't forget you will be old don't forget you will be old one day you will not be able to move your legs and it is not just your child who will help you it's your track record that will help you sometimes you see very old people roaming around moving and you are wondering why is mama why is baba suffering like this don't they have children then they will tell you the child is somewhere in the u.s even running a charity foundation and blessing people and the child will say my mother rather dies or my father i know what they did to me i cried and i begged them i pleaded with them to give me a chance for life and they shut the door at me but the god of all mercy came and met me i believe in people provided a plant is not dead you can still water it you only stop watering a plant when it is dead a dead plant cannot have life again but a plant that is dying can be revived hallelujah 
I received several text messages from people, most of them for prayers. But then a few times people send me text messages and say something like, Apostle, thank you so much. You may not know me, but today I'm a graduate because of my fees that you paid and I don't even know the people. Today, Apostle, thank you for what you have done. You cannot imagine this and that and that and that. We are able to eat today because of this and that. And I say, Lord, thank you. Sometimes tears come out of my eyes and I say, Lord, I remember where you took me from. Some of us this morning, we need to remember where he took us from. Because you see, the beauty of the palace can so erode the pain of the wilderness that you will forget it was from there you came. Blessed are the merciful. Some of us need to go back right now and call our children together and say, look, gentlemen and ladies, I know you may not be doing well, but I need to tell you that I want to participate in your life. Provided you are alive, I will not give up on you. Remember, don't forget the condition I taught you for administering mercy. If you do not find brokenness, don't waste your time administering mercy. Let me repeat. If you do not find brokenness, no matter how emotional the people are, once you do not find brokenness, I give you an advanced information. Communicating mercy will be a waste of time. But if and when you find brokenness, let mercy prevail over judgment. Hallelujah. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me. You look beyond me. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me. You look beyond me. Listen, it's time for you today to call somebody you know. You know that that woman has been bereaved, cannot help herself to say, listen, how have you been? Just to let you know that I love you and to let you know that if for any reason I can help to make your life easier, I am here. It's not all about money. Your prayer is also a gift. Compassion is also a gift. Many of you may have heard this in my teachings that aside being a man of God, the greatest testimony about my life that I desire, aside being a man of God and aside being a lover of God, is that I was a shoulder for wounded people. It's a testimony that is priceless to me. I can't wipe the tears of everybody, but let me do my best. Let me not see someone who is crying with brokenness and then I have the power to help. I will help. I will certainly help. I have wept at funerals. I have cried with people. I've told people, listen, I may not be able to help. I may not be able to pray. I've prayed the person is not coming back to life, but at least let me help. The hymn writer, we used to sing the hymn in the seminary. And it says, Thus will we pass from the earth and it's toiling remember that song only remembered by what we have done not by what we had not by the offices we occupied we must be guided by three things as we sojourn this path of life number one the fear of the lord number two conscience number three a sense of posterity So I recall for you again one more time and one last time the story of the Samaritan. The priest ignored that man who was in need of mercy. The Levite ignored that man who was in need of mercy. But when the Samaritan came, he did his best. Can I tell you, 
God does not burden us with any assignment to do everything and be everything to everyone. That is a call to a burden and a load, a luggage that God did not give you. But then God encourages us to do our best. Our best. As a man of God, I've made up my mind that I will do the best that I can. That my life and my ministry will be an instrument of mercy. This is why I do the things that I do. First, because I love Jesus. But sincerely, the second reason is because I love everyone I minister to. I don't go to preach to be a celebrity. I go to preach because I love God's people. And I know that if God has granted me the rare privilege of bringing an information that can help lighten their burden, God has granted me an anointing that can help bring healing, bring hope and help them, then I will not waste it. Is God speaking to someone? Now we are going to pray. The first prayer is going to be a cry for repentance. Some of us sincerely, I don't mean to dishonor you, but we need to pray this morning and say, Lord, change this heart of stone to a heart of flesh. Some of you, even if you see a dead body on the ground, you will kick it and move. That is a, is a Luciferian heart. We have to pray and say, Lord, replace this heart of stone with a heart of flesh. A heart of flesh a heart that can be compassionate that if someone is crying I can't just turn my face and act as though nothing happened no you hear that someone lost their loved ones even if you cannot bring resources to do anything you can come and say please let us pray Lord we pray for the comfort of the spirit and that's it that contribution Someday, if Christ tarries, whether you like it or not, we'll all not be here. It's a news many of us don't like hearing. If Christ tarries, every dead man today once stood before a dead body. Hmm. Please listen to me. I didn't come to waste your time this morning. This is one of those teachings you must archive in your heart. Did I do my best? To live for truth did I live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find treasured gold in Mary clay, turning sinners into saints. And I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after. For you've shown me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is gone I was not singing I was revealing something to you That someday that clock will stop and the treasure you have that can go with you is the treasure of mercy how far you reached for his name's sake who you were able to help today some of you God is speaking to you you have not raised anybody aside from your biological children there is nobody today who has come to know Jesus because of you there is nobody who has had a life of meaning and purpose because of you no excuses it's time to make up our minds the women in this great church have gathered us this morning to remind us again it is not only the God of mercy we cry for for mercy we must pray that God will also make us merciful fire for fire will end two of you in ashes you will need to soft pedal your approach to life 
and approach it with mercy and compassion. Prayer point number one. Lord, walk on my heart. Is someone praying? Walk on my heart. I don't know how you are going to cry to God this morning. Please don't act like you did not hear this preacher sent from God. The foundations of Sapphire have called us together. Walk upon my heart. I have been sowing wrong seeds. I tremble at your word this morning. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. I have participated in the pain and the destruction of many. I am the reason why so many are in tears today. I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent before the God of all flesh. Someone pray. Someone pray. Those following online, are you praying? Asking the God of all grace to purge your heart. Mercy is a harvest. If you do not sow that seed of mercy, do not expect a harvest. Someone is praying. Lord, the grace to cry with them that cry. The grace to stand with them who have demonstrated genuine brokenness. The grace to forbear. The grace to be merciful. To be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. Please pray. The grace to communicate mercy. Lord, take away this hard-heartedness. Grant me a heart of flesh. Grant me a heart of flesh. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. This is a message this morning. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are those who spend their lives sowing these seeds of mercy every day and everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came in yesterday and I will tell you this and sincerely from the depth of my heart I saw the way our mothers and the women in this church the love the graciousness the care you know I kept looking at them and wondering in my mind did they have to go this far and I could see that show of compassion and love and mercy number one I saw from yesterday and today it's not my first time here but I saw afresh that they were mothers indeed number two I saw again that these were people who did not just give a topic just to honor a conference but truly that from their hearts this was something that was already a lifestyle and for many they were willing to concretize it as a lifestyle their love and their benevolence was my own sermon in this conference. And I say that without any sense of flattery. Even up until this morning. I was so humbled by their show of love and compassion. And I said, Lord, thank you. I came to preach. But I also came as an audience to hear the foundations of Sapphire preach. And let me tell you, you preached a powerful message preached a powerful message this is a women conference but please allow my bias before we go to the second prayer I have 10 more minutes I want to also salute the men in this church hold on before you clap I will tell you why because for the men in this church to have allowed their wives this freedom of expression and to give them this opportunity to stretch this far to make this happen without feeling insecure 
without feeling sad the fallen man is usually um he's ego driven and so when you see men who have been cultured by the power of god so enlightened and transformed by the power of the word of god to allow the purposes of god find expression unhindered we cannot ignore it can we honor our men in this church i'm not a politician this is not a manifesto for any political party i stand here as one sent by god truly everyone is standing here some of you are fathers mothers you probably may have been too hard on your children and this sermon is a cause for everything don't say i'm like that that's where the holy spirit comes as a helper he can help us change some of us children we are here and it's not demons attacking our parents is the trouble we keep showing them after everything they have given it's time for a change don't say it's their responsibility to take care of me one day you will be a parent too remember growing up i used to see my parents do certain things and you know as children would frown at a lot of things but when i became an adult and i became a leader my respect and my regard for parents multiplied and it continues to multiply every day unbelievable things they have to endure and they had to endure some of us here are workers we need to be merciful to our subordinates some of us here are leaders at different levels it is good to be strict and work in compliance with the terms that make for excellence and progress but we must keep a space in our hearts where we can show mercy 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 sing a song and then we'll do the last prayer Lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase Lord make us instruments of your peace the walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instruments of peace. There are many family people after this meeting, you need to go back home and say, it's all right. This fight and this, this ego-driven conflict in this home, let's swallow our pride and show one another mercy let's fight for what we cherish the most for some of us you need to return back you are deserving you are not yet deserving of mercy i meant to say many of you looking at me here you are saying thank god apostle is preaching this thank god my boss is in this church he will not show you mercy because you are not broken some of you are not yet broken can i tell you provided there is pride so that you don't misunderstand what I've been laboring here to say. If there is pride and an unrepentant heart, I've told you that mercy is a waste. As merciful as God is, there are people going to hell today. There are people in hell. The fact that there is someone in hell should tell you that mercy has limits. Rebellion and disobedience keeps pushing you away out of the boundary of mercy. And the moment you get out of the boundary of mercy, all that you see left is judgment. Are we together? I prayed yesterday for some prayer requests and I just felt stirred in my heart that there were people who did not have an opportunity to submit those requests. I have seven more minutes here and I don't intend to shoot beyond the time. At the permission of your pastor, can I please request that in the next one minute, please write what you are trusting God for. If you were not able to submit it, ushers, please help us. In case you wrote yesterday and you wrote in unbelief, you didn't stretch your faith to write the things that need to be solved. 
please I want you to write very quickly the covenant keeping God is about to arise for you please write it with faith in your heart From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Help me. Adonai, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Adonai, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Please write it down. Everything you are trusting God to do in your life. Please write it down. Write it down. Father, healing by your mercy for my loved one. Someone is having cancer, even stage four. Write it down. Lord, I'm trusting you to recover all the losses that I incurred from COVID. Write it down. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything, Philippians 4, 6, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, it says, let your request be made known unto God. There is a God that answers prayers. There is a God that answers prayers. Please ushers help. If you are done, can you wave it? Let's save time. Just wave it. Please help them. Someone is, there are people waving theirs. Just wave it and we'll bring it before the God of heaven. For those of you who are following online, watching by television, or you are connecting through the internet, you may be wondering, Apostle, how do we get our request here? Let me tell you what you need to do. If you can't send it, I want you to just write your prayer request and then lift it as a point of contact while I pray, expecting the God of all grace and mercy to visit you. Are we done? I'm about to start praying now. Is there someone? Okay, please help. Uh, we have our father there. Please everyone begin to pray in one minute while you are standing. Lord, you who is the God of mercy, arise for me. Please don't keep quiet. Pray in one minute. Arise in your power. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. Pray, pray. 
Go ahead and pray. God of wonders will arise for someone believe me for somebody writing this testimony you will keep recording testimonies till this year is done hallelujah now here's what I want you to do you don't have to kneel I'll do the kneeling for you as I kneel to pray please in one minute I'd like you to cry because some of you have cried and cried cry to the God of all mercy Lord these Egyptians I see today May I see them no more forever. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. No distraction. We have just a minute or two. Someone is praying. You came to church this morning. Healings. Miracles supernatural provisions by the mercy of God liftings restorations deliverances from the valley of the shadow of death someone pray someone pray someone pray You're praying. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Elohim. My God, His mighty presence in this place. Fill this place. Is someone pray? An end comes to captivity. Oh God of mercy, arise in your power, arise in your mercy, visit families, visit destinies, visit ministries, visit businesses. Hallelujah. I want you to agree with me and please shout a resounding amen when we begin to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of prophecy, I declare unto you that these Egyptians you see today may you see them no more forever
for someone here in the name of Jesus my God is bringing you restoration before the end of this month not next year not next month how God will begin to move people and things will surprise you let it be for you in the name of Jesus for someone here God is saying I should tell you that that missing donkey is on his way back home I'm saying this by the Spirit of God that missing donkey is on his way back home you will understand what God is saying that missing donkey is on his way back home for someone here God is speaking to you with five loaves and two fish you will feed five thousand and yet twelve baskets will be left in the name of Jesus Christ For another person here it will be for you like it was for Mordecai the Bible says that night could not the king sleep and he said bring me the Chronicles and they open where Mordecai saved the life of the king and was not honored in the name of Jesus let the book of remembrance be open for your sake be sensitive one minute and we're wrapping up hmm. something is happening in this place this woman I'm seeing oil coming on her this woman close to the one lifting her hands help that woman I just saw oil and the Lord is saying it's the oil of favor the oil of favor I use her as a point of contact to pray for everyone here help them please where you have not seen favor in your life in Abakatoshkatebakata May that grace rest upon you now. You don't have to bring them out. May that grace rest upon you now. Hallelujah. Please hear me. When Jesus was born, the spirit of the Antichrist through Herod wanted to seek for him and kill him. They hid him somewhere and the angel appeared and told Joseph, he said, you can now return. Those who seek the life of your child are gone. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who seek your downfall, those who seek your tears, those who want evil to continue in your life, those who laugh with you in the open, but go back in the secret and wish you evil. May the God of judgment arise in the name of Jesus. name of Jesus I'm looking at hands in the realm of the spirit God is showing me but I'm seeing the hands empty there is nothing on them can I tell you empty handedness is a cause I want to rebuke it from your life father I cry to you in the name of Jesus oh God of mercy arise everyone here every family here represented who have suffered the cause and the plague of empty handedness may my God visit you this morning anyone here trusting God for a job you have applied you have done everything you know to do in the name of Jesus three months from today by the power that raised Christ from the dead may my God grant you rest hallelujah we're wrapping up please believe now let me pray I prayed a prayer yesterday that I want to repeat today if there is anyone here or any family the spirit of death has been looking for you through dreams you go to sleep and you see yourself dead people calling you the Bible says what fellowship has, what what does the living have to do with the dead any spirit of the dead calling you in the name of Jesus here at this conference by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I separate you from the spirit of the grave. Hallelujah. I did say also yesterday 
that all blessings come from God through man to man. Please never forget this. All blessings come from God through man. That means you need both God and man to receive. Some of you, God said yes since 2017. But the men that must also say yes, the devil has been driving them from your life. Let me call them by prophecy. In the name of Jesus, every human vessel who has been ordained and assigned to partner with prophecy and bring the manifestation of the word of God in your life, in the name of Jesus, I release them right now to your destiny. I release them right now to your destiny. I release them right now to your destiny. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray for the foundations of Sapphire. My apologies for taking two or three minutes. Let's pray for our mothers, our aunties, the women in this church. Please open your mouth in one minute and cry from the depth of your heart. Lord, we pray for foundations of Sapphire. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, bless them. Honor them. Anoint them. Increase them. Multiply them. The sounds of mourning would not be heard in their midst. The sounds of shame and defeat would not be heard in their midst. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You came to this church this morning and you are standing right here. As you listen to me teach on the mercy of God, the Holy Spirit began to convict your heart to tell you that you need to be a principal recipient of that mercy this morning. The hallmark of the demonstration of God's mercy was his substitutionary sacrifice on the cross. You are here and Jesus is calling you. Please, no distraction. Perhaps you are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but as it is, my life and my destiny has gone haywire. I need restoration. Our time is gone. We just have one minute for you here at this morning service. I want you to win that war this morning. Wherever you are, please run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before me here. It is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Don't look at anybody. This is between you and Jesus. Please come and stand. Celebrate them as they come. I'll count three and we'll begin to pray. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Come, calling for you and for me. Two, Jesus is calling, calling for you and come home, come home. You are weary come oh come to Jesus softly and tenderly Jesus is calling calling all sinners come home apostle I want to come but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not join them there is no such thing as I'm not sure if you are not sure come and be sure this morning please quickly very quickly we want to pray Remember, you are not a candidate for mercy when there is no brokenness. There has to be a broken and a contrite spirit. As powerful as the mercy of God is, it depends on brokenness. The magnet that attracts it to your life is brokenness. Thank you for making this bold decision. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Jesus is calling you. What a harvest this morning. Is someone celebrating Jesus? Don't be ashamed of your tears. He will give you a new beginning. Now please, look at me, all of you who are here. I know you are crying. Can I tell you this? Every one of us cried like you too. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Your tears are a token, a representation of of your desperation and your need my bible says the lord is nigh them that call upon him 
there are many people who come out for an altar call and they are not serious they just stand roaming around i assure you they were not saved coming out is not what saves you is the contriteness of heart and then professing with that prayer with faith in your heart thank you very much for making this decision may i please request that you lift your right hand and those who are following online you are making jesus lord of your life here is a chance to open up and receive you pray this prayer also it doesn't matter the nation whether you are watching by way of rebroadcast this is an opportunity for you to make jesus lord of your life please lift your hands those of you in front here i want you to say this after me honestly there are people crying here my god and my heart is even say after me dear lord jesus one more time say it again I believe in you say it let the devil hear you say I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification I declare that I cannot help myself help me this morning I receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from today and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb amen and amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones for no man comes to you except you draw them they have responded to this call many of them with tears in their eyes lord jesus thank you for the honor of bringing this one to the king of kings and the lord of lords i pray that the power of god will keep you i pray that the grace of god will keep you by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and in the name of jesus i declare that you start afresh with god today no going back you go forward ever and backward never i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life Amen. for in jesus name i pray Amen. thank you now please here's what i want you to do many of you are crying honestly this is you can't imagine how i mean I've, it's been a long time since i saw so many people just crying and weeping before the lord in genuine repentance our father is there waving his hands now here's what I want all of you to do please in concert I want you to follow him and a few counselors will be there to pray with you just have your details and you'll be back have they been given the card or they'll be okay praise God let's celebrate them as they go thank you please hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.